Before getting started with any kind of digital audio in PD, we have to look at a few settings to make sure that our sound card is set up properly and also um, know that we have to turn on and off the digital audio converter or the DAC. To make sure our sound card is set up properly, we'll go to PD Extended and check out the preferences and audio settings. This particular window will have the audio settings for your sound card. It's going to be different uh, per computer. I'm just using the built-in microphone for input and uh, the built-in speakers for output. So you see that selected. I think one thing that's really critical that isn't so clear is the delay in milliseconds. Um, that is the latency from playing something to when you actually hear it. 20 milliseconds is, I guess, relatively long. Um, but if you set it too short and your audio card especially if it's on board, uh, you might find clicks and pops. If you set it too long, you won't find any clicks and pops, but there's a noticeable delay. I think one thing that's really critical is that this delay actually applies also to MIDI messages. So if you are not using any audio in PD, you can actually set this delay uh, down to one or zero. Um, anyhow, so the audio sample rate is set here, 44.1 standard CD sample rate. And when you see that these settings are fine, you'll choose OK. And you'll have to uh, finagle your audio settings between PD and also um, the Core Audio MIDI uh, driver it's to make sure that you've got your driver installed, um, that you're not doing conflicting settings between PD and what the system is using. OK, under the Media window, you'll find Audio On, Audio Off. In PD, you actually have to turn the audio driver on to use it or turn it off. Thankfully, we don't have to go to this menu to actually click on and off. I'm going to show you a few ways to do this. If we pull up the main window, you'll see here that there's a compute audio uh, button that by default is off. I've been using it before, so it's on. This corresponds to media audio on, audio off. But I'm going to show you programmatically right now how you can turn this on with a patch. First thing you'll do is create a toggle. Remember that a toggle sends out a zero and a one. And then we'll create a message box. Now this message box will start with a semicolon, hard return, PD, space, DSP, and then dollar sign one. Now what the dollar sign is doing is it's taking the input and assigning the value. So DSP zero means shut off the audio. DSP one means turn on the audio. So I'll put a little uh, number atom to the side so you can see. And when I toggle this on, the DSP is on. You can see that compute audio is checked. When I turn it off, compute audio is unchecked. This is my preferred method for turning on and off the audio um, in PD. Another method is you could just create two separate message boxes, PD DSP one, which would be on, and then another one with a zero which would be off. I just like a toggle. OK, so we're going to read sound files off the disk. We're not going to put them in memory. Uh, so that's a critical difference here. So basically, we're going to be streaming these files off the hard disk. They will play once, and then we'll have to load them again. It's a bit clunky, but it's our first method for dealing with audio within PD. So let me go ahead and turn the DSP on. And what we're going to be dealing with is essentially an object called read SF. Now, one thing about audio objects in PD is they always have a tilde at the end. And you'll notice this very thick gray outlet, or if the inlet is to accept audio signal, um, it'll be thick gray also. So there's a difference between control rate, which is the uh, thinner, clearer inlet outlet, and audio rate, which is the thicker, darker um, inlet and outlet. So read SF is expecting some sound file on our local computer. So we'll send a message, open, and the name of the file, which I already have in my brain. It can read uh, WAV files or AIF. I think it can read a few other formats too. I'm not so sure about MP3. I'd have to look that up. OK. And now we're going to put that into the inlet of read SF. And then we're going to create a start message, 
which also could be um, substituted with a zero or a one message rather and a stop message. And we will put these into read SF. So the process is going to be load the file with open and then choose to start it because it won't load automatically on start. We could obviously use a trigger for that. But what you got to know is when you're loading an audio file into read SF, you got to give it a little time. It's not instantaneous. Um, now that we're dealing with audio, it, there, there, there's a lot more care paid to the sequencing of events in order to get uh, your patch to respond correctly. Now what's critical here is we don't have an object to hear the audio. So when we want to hear audio out of our system, then it's DAC, tilde, and you can specify channels. So if I type 1, that'll be channel 1 on the system. If I type 2, that's channel 2. So I'm going to type 1 space 2, that's channel 1 and 2. And actually with read SF, I should type how many channels my file has. It's a stereo file. So I'll pipe each of these into the DAC, create a bang, the rightmost outlet of read SF will bang when the file is done. So that can be helpful for timing events. Okay, pipe it in and start. So I've got this marching snare um, file that is being loaded in. Now if I press start again, nothing happens because I actually have to load the file again into read SF. In another movie, we'll take a look at using tables and arrays to play back files um, using uh, RAM. It's much more flexible, but this is just basic uh, file reading using PD. Now, I'm going to show you a better method for doing this, which is a lot more flexible and will allow you to use the GUI to browse for files on your hard drive. To do this, we're going to take out the 17 marching snare and put dollar sign $1. What we've learned about dollar signs so far, so far is that they stand for the input. So now we're going to use an object called open panel. And this is going to open a GUI to let us search on our hard drive for a file. An open panel is expecting a bang. Okay, so now lock the patcher, bang it. Okay, so we see tutorials. That's the folder I'm in. And I've got another file here. It's a bit of a funny 80s inspired uh, beat. Anyhow, it's, it's, it's a bit more comical <clears throat> than the other one. Okay, so now the last thing that we're going to do is take a look at the amplitude of the sound file coming in. To do that, we're going to use an object called ENV, E N V, and tilde. You see that this accepts audio rate coming in, but spits out control going out. So I'll create two of these, and I'll connect the output of read SF to ON. Now, the numbers spit out are from zero upwards, and I'm going to use a VU meter to read uh, the envelope or, or to display the numbers meaningfully. So this is going to require a little bit of trickery. Create an object called VU. Create another object, just copy it. And VU is expecting control um, rate input. If I plug this straight into VU, it's not going to work because VU is expecting negative 100 upwards. So what I've got to do is create minus 100 two times and connect to on. Now I can connect this to the left inlet of VU and read it. So open the file. Remember, when it's done playing, you have to load it again uh, and play.
So in a nutshell, this is one way to get started with audio and reading files in PD. First, you've got to make sure that your um, PD is set to use the right driver. So if you've got a Motu or you've got a Focusrite or some sort of external uh, box that you're going to use, you've got to set PD up to use it. And that, that'll be really cool, especially if you've got multiple channels and you're going to do a surround mixing or some sort of immersive sound. So to do that, you go to the preferences under audio, make sure it's all set up. Uh, make sure the delay is set as low as possible, as low as your system can handle it, because that's definitely going to affect um, your experience as you do things in PD and as they're received. The more delay there is, the, the less the suspension of disbelief that you're actually doing something. It could be a real uh, bummer. So when this is set up and you're doing your patch, you've got to remember to create an object that's going to turn off and on the audio in PD. So I prefer to do this using this message box method that has PD DSP dollar sign one with a toggle turning it on and off. But there are a few different ways to do that. You can also remembering just do it on the front end, compute audio on and off. Okay, then if you want to read a file off disk, and this is streaming off disk, not loading into memory, you need the read SF tilde object. You designate the number of channels. Okay, so two. And that's got to be piped into the DAC. The DAC is how you hear any kind of audio. If we were making synths, we're doing granular synthesis, we were doing uh, samplers, the DAC is how it's going to get to our earphones. Okay, and then using the read SF as uh, the object example, we're going to pipe a message open and then the sound file name, or in this particular case, I'm using dollar sign one to allow me to use input from open panel. An open panel is fired with a bang and it opens up a GUI. I could take a look at what file I want to load, a wave or an AIF, uh, if I choose uh, Marching Snare. It's loaded into Read SF, but it's not going to play. You need a, just a tiny bit of time from when it's loaded to when you can actually start it. And you can start it with either a one or zero, or a one message or a start message. You can stop it with a zero message or a stop message. But notice that now that I've stopped it, I have to load it again because it's streaming off disk. Anyhow, when you've got it loaded, you can get a visualization of the output using the onv object. That spits out control rate, minus 100, sent into a vu object. That's just v and u. And you get something that will produce uh, reading uh, sound files and audio in PD.